Hello, everybody. Uh, this is John Barker, President and CEO of the Ohio Restaurant Association with our uh, Daily Dose. And today we have as our guest, Sean Kennedy. And Sean is the Executive Vice President of Public Affairs for the National Restaurant Association. Good to see you again. Good to see you, John. Yeah, things, uh, things busy in uh, D.C., I can imagine, and uh, keeping you hopping, huh? It's never a dull moment. They just came back into town. Uh, today's Tuesday. They just came back into town yesterday for a three-week sprint before uh, leaving for August, the conventions, and then the elections. Wow, not much going on, huh? Right. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, you and I talk a lot, and, uh, you know, many of us in the State Restaurant Association is working with your team, and, and we're really a big team. And, and I mean that. It's just, it's been working really well. You know, we had a lot of success with the Paycheck Protection Program, and then the Flexibility Act, and with your mm -hmm. leadership and, and your team. And now we are, here we go again, right? Um, there's just been a lot of talk in the restaurant industry, you know, there's uh, we have closures coming at us again at the state and local level, capacity limitations. Now we're starting to see pop up. Um, we also know the consumers are a little more reticent, and we know that because we're seeing the, the sales numbers come in a little bit, right? We had a better June, July has been a little softer, and so we're hearing a lot, you know, from folks around Ohio. What are you hearing, John? You're absolutely right that there is a lot more. There's a growing realization that's finally come to Washington that this pandemic is going to have a much longer impact on this industry than anyone would have thought in the beginning. If you go back to when PPP was created, the, the, the fact that it had an eight week covered period was the congressional hope that we would all go into hibernation as a country for eight weeks in some form or fashion. And then on one day later, we would turn on our lights, we'd be at 100% capacity, and it would be back to pre-pandemic pre normals. Now it's going back March 14th, which was four months ago. Uh, what we've seen since then has been sort of a worst case scenario, gradual reopenings, but then as incidents of the pandemic continue to spike in communities, you've, the governments have responded by either shutting down those capacity increases or in some instances, closing restaurant operations altogether. Over the last two weeks, uh, restaurants in, in affected jurisdictions have been shut down to the tune of 100,000 by federal, by state and local mandates. And as your viewers know better than anybody, restaurants don't really come with an on-off switch. It's incredibly disruptive and it pushes a lot more restaurants into the unthinkable of shutting down operations overall. We are spending as much time and capital as we can emphasizing that message right now. The lack of consumer confidence is a big problem as well, as you noted. Nationwide, even restaurants that have 50% capacity are not seeing a packed house. So it's a, we need to uh, approach this in a much more comprehensive way than just restaurant recovery, because we also need to get that consumer confidence issue resolved as well. Right. We, um, you know, in, in Ohio, we started a big campaign uh, this week to really bring some clarity around what's going on with COVID, what happens if you get a case in your restaurant, right. what are the health officials telling us, and we're actually putting out a, a, a tremendous amount of information. We have another webinar coming on that this week that folks will be able to listen to live or, you know, listen to it later if they want to and uh, some FAQ documents and we're doing a big PR push because, Good. you know, it's interesting, our restaurants, you know, they're following all the guidelines. A lot of health officials say it's one of the safest places to be uh, in a restaurant. So, and, and I'll, I'll note that one element that's in our blueprint, I know we're going to talk about that later, but the notion of if a restaurant does comply with everything in Ohio state regulations, everything that Cincinnati may put on top of that, if you are a good actor and you have a safe environment, you need at least a safe harbor from sort of drive-by litigation where someone says, I got corona and I ate once at a restaurant two weeks ago, so it must be because of them. It's one of the priorities that we're putting into our plan and we're, we're really hoping that we can get some traction on that front because the risks are just too great because we are such a socially facing industry. That's a, that's a good, good point. And you know, I know we're working on at the federal level, many, many states are as well. Right. We actually got it uh, working through both the House and Senate here in Ohio, hoping it, it gets through state. But having federal uh, coverage on this would be, would be yeah. a critical improvement. No Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, we've been talking about the blueprint, and since uh, working with you last week and, and you launched it, we were right on the heels um, with that. And we've been talking about it just, you know, anybody will stop for two seconds, we're talking about it. Uh, and I know you are too. And uh, a number of things are in the in the blueprint. It's really well put together. I know that potentially a second round of the Paycheck Protection Program uh, could be, you know, something that we get done in that. And I thought we would just talk for a second about the highlights in in the blueprint. 
Well, it's a joint document, obviously, between the National Restaurant Association and the Ohio Restaurant Association. It's the third policy document that we've put out together. The first was March 18th, just four days after restaurants were shut down. The second was on April 20th. And what we have heard from partners and, and leaders like you, John, is just that as the challenges and opportunities of our industry have been evolving over the past four months, so does our ask of what we are seeking from Congress. The early iterations, uh, March 18th and April 20th, were really focused solely on the short-term recovery. How can we ensure that we can just keep our lights on and uh, our, our folks on payroll uh, through the end of this pandemic? What we have, the conversations as, as we've been talking, uh, what we've both concluded is we also need, we need a more comprehensive plan that deals with things like customer confidence, that deals with what happens when a vaccine comes out. And that's what the blueprint for restaurant revival reflects. Uh, your, your viewers can see it online, uh, an executive summary in the full text at our website, restaurants act, restaurants is plural, act.com. But there are three real main components yeah, to it. It looks a lot like this. It's beautiful, right? Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. The three major components. First is just that short-term recovery. We, have, uh, we are well on track with losses. Uh, right now, we're at about $145 billion in losses for this industry. Our projection remains that we'll be at $240 billion by the end of the year. Uh, if you were to ask me what our number one and number two priority are, one is just a restaurant specific recovery plan. We've been asking for that together since March uh, 18th. Uh, the restaurant recovery fund, a, 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 a variant of that has been introduced in the Senate by um, Roger Wicker of Mississippi and Kirsten Cinema of uh, Arizona. It's called the Restaurants Act. It's a good piece of legislation that would help the smaller operators. But we also need to make sure that we have a second round of PPP available as well uh, there needs to be basically something that's very specific to the restaurant industry. We're looking for tax credits to cover things like PPP, excuse me, PPE expenses, contactless payments, the myriad of ways that restaurants have to make new capital investments in a socially distant world of operations. We want to improve the liability uh, um, protections that are available for restaurants right now. We also wanna make sure that PPP expenses that are used, and this is something we've heard a lot from, from your uh, operators, John, is that PPP expenses should be tax deductible. If you use a PPP loan on something that's traditionally tax deductible, it should be allowed. It, it's unfathomable to us, but the Trump administration opposes that. And we, Congress has been clear that that's their intent. We need to double down and get that in legislation. The second bucket, of what we're looking for is how do we ensure that the restaurant industry is poised to continue to thrive as testing and vaccine ramps up. We need to see better coordination between federal, state, and local governments on the sharing of testing data so that folks in Ohio know what the numbers are. They know what the science is. They know if their community is safer and it's safer for them to go out to a restaurant. Similarly, when a vaccine comes out, the Trump administration has said that their first priority is going to be those frontline first responders. Uh, we're talking hospital workers, police, things like that. He's absolutely right. They need to be at the front of the line. Once they are taken care of, the notion of the food supply chain for America becomes vital. And it's not just the uh, farmers in the field or the uh, meat packers and the producers, but restaurants and grocery workers play a critical end role in that food supply chain for so many millions of Americans and so many hundreds of thousands of Ohioans. We wanna make sure that we're in that chain as well uh, for purposes of, the, uh, of a vaccine if it's distributed to our employees. Then third is how do we help the growing number of at-risk communities that we have in Ohio and throughout the country? The economic impact of this has just been so severe and there are more, restaurant industry has always been one of relief uh, as well as one of hospitality. There are two things we'd like to do. One is to enable restaurants on a short-term basis to be able to accept food stamps, SNAP benefits. You can buy bread and ham and cheese at a grocery store with SNAP benefits, but you can't buy a ham and cheese prepared sandwich from a restaurant. Uh, as families right now under these unprecedented times, they need that kind of flexibility to temporarily use SNAP benefits to purchase a restaurant meal. And then last, there are so many state programs that could use vacant restaurant space in our workforce to provide safe, nutritious meals uh, for at-risk families. A lot of restaurants would like to be a part of that solution, 
but the rules are so onerous right now. We're calling for uh, a greater simplification to allow restaurants to contract out with state and federal government offices to provide relief services like that. It's a comprehensive take, but that's always what the Ohio Restaurant Association and the National Restaurant Association try to do for our members. And at a time like this, uh, this is why people join a trade association. So it's been a lot of sleepless nights uh, for you, John, and, and for us here in Washington, but this is literally why people pay their dues and we are more than ready to step up. You know, Sean, it's interesting. You have this, all the intellectual ask we're gonna be asking for, but then, you know, wrapping this around this, this showing the heart of hospitality that we have in this industry, right. and taking care of each other, taking care of our, our neighborhoods and our neighbors and our friends and doing things that just allow our industry to continue to be great citizens. And so we've heard so many, we've heard so many anecdotes from folks from, from you and from others on little things that don't get press. They don't get PR about ways that restaurants give back to their community. And what's remarkable, John, is it's not done for the PR or the social media hits. It's just done because that's in the DNA of, of every restaurant operator. They want to serve the community and, and not only paying guests, but the community as a whole. And it's been so um, heartening for us in Washington. We just want to make sure we can do everything we can from here to enable more of that to occur. Full steam ahead on that, no question. And uh, you got our full support. And, uh, you know, our board has stepped up, our, our restaurant advisory uh, group uh, here in Ohio, they're stepping up, yeah. we're doing a lot of that. One of the things our, our, our folks are always interested in, okay, so here it is, you know, everybody's back in DC, we're all reading the stories, we get to see the highlights. Um, what's going on, Sean? What's going on behind the scenes? How will we move this thing forward in the next couple of weeks? So today's, uh, it's Tuesday afternoon right now. Congress came in yesterday. Sure. The, the president is, well, just, I think your folks, but they see it later. Uh, it is, uh, right now, Republicans are almost negotiating with themselves right now. Senate and, and House Republicans are negotiating with the White House on what are the contours of this bill going to look like. House Democrats passed a bill on a party line vote earlier this year. Uh, it was a few trillion dollars of spending. It has some things in it that we like. It has some things in it that uh, we, we find very challenging. The Senate has said, it's, uh, Senate Republicans have said they're not going to embrace it. They're going to unveil their plan to sometime today or tomorrow. It, we, by all uh, accounts, it will be a little over a trillion dollars in spending, not three or four trillion dollars. We think it will include an extension of the Paycheck Protection Program, which is something we've been calling for. We think it will also include some liability reforms, which we've also been calling for, and a few other cats and dogs that we're waiting to find out that would really provide some support. Uh, the tough part that will come after that, John, is once the Republicans are on one piece of paper, they then bring in Democrats, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, and start working on what is a plan that can pass the Senate without a filibuster and can clear a Democratic-controlled House. Uh, they've got three weeks to do that. A lot of folks say that it's that's not enough time and the distance between the two sides is too great. I personally think that this pandemic has say, taken such a turn for the worse that it doesn't matter what political party you're on, you know that you cannot leave town for the August recess without some kind of solution for American families and small businesses like restaurants. I think the odds are good that we will see a package uh, reach the president's desk but right now we all have to fight like hell just to make sure that our voice is heard because it is incredibly loud here in Washington with every group holding a Zoom call, a virtual press conference, or saying why they need a unique solution from Congress right now. Right, and it's, it's, I tell you, to be fair, there are many industries that are in different types of duress. Ours, however, we were hit first, in between us and the, and the hotel and lodging industry, we were hit first, the deepest, and that fact just doesn't change, right? I mean, we have, Many of our operators, I'm sure you're hearing it as well, is saying they're almost already out of the PPP money that they got, right. which was a great bridge. It really was. And, it, and they're so thankful for it. But here we are, you know, we're really in the middle, uh, moving into late July. That money's running out, a lot of shutdowns, a lot of capacity limitations going on. I know in Pennsylvania, which is right next to us, they have a 25% uh, indoor capacity limit. And as I talk to, you know, our peers there, you can't even you can't even imagine operating at twenty five percent. So, and we're also going to be the last to fully recover, John. So many communities in Ohio, you've got more restaurant capacity than you have locals. You need business travel. You want you know those corporate dollars coming in. You want vacationers. You want honeymoons. You want conventions. You want everybody in between. Until that comes in, 
uh, restaurants are going to continue to be in a really untenable situation. So as you correctly note, we were the first to, to shut down. We're going to be the last to recover. And, and I absolutely agree that a lot of industries are suffering right now. Uh, but we, as the nation's second largest employer, uh, really are in the unenviable position of having lost more jobs and more revenue than any other industry. And that's why we are very comfortable saying, I know everyone's asking you for support and attention, but we really need to be at the front of the line. Let's talk about that. I know that we typically try to get our folks to, uh, to step up and do something. What are we asking them to do? Well, the first, the easiest way is just to go through our website, restaurantsact.com and sign our virtual petition. But what's been really effective about Ohio in particular is the way that you've mobilized your membership uh, specific to Ohio with your senators, with your house delegation. Uh, you have got an incredible army, so to speak, of, of uh, restaurant operators that are in every, it doesn't matter if it's a red, a red community or a blue community, it's nonpartisan. You're hyper local. And every member of Congress has got that favorite restaurant that they are frequenting probably more now than, than before since everybody's been saying so much time back here. Uh, and it's really almost, if, if folks could sign up for restaurantsact.com, we will add them to the petition. We'll also make sure they get updates. But equally important is to follow your lead in Ohio, John. It is when you make a call uh, to say, you guys need to put down your spreadsheets or your kitchen knives and be a de facto lobbyist for 30 minutes. It's, that's not an alarm that we idly pull. Uh, you and I are paid to do that on a 24 seven basis. And we do that, mm -hmm. but this is the moment when folks need to hear not only from people like John Barker and Sean Kennedy, but they need to hear from the operators directly so that they are listening to your stories. They're hearing that you, you aren't gonna survive much longer. And they were all speaking with a coordinated voice and a unified message. Got it. So that's, uh, that's what we're asking on this call. That's what we're going to ask in writing. And, you know, we send out regular communications to our teams. We do have some group calls set up at uh, individuals writing letters, sending emails, making calls. It all matters. It, it really helped. We all work together on the PPP and the Flexibility Act. So let's go after round three and get it done, right? I appreciate it. Everything, uh, we, we cannot be, we're so appreciative of everything you're doing in Ohio, John. It's a critical state. Uh, and look, it's it's the fact that you are going to be so critical for presidential elections means that you have a slightly higher platform to speak from because politicians on both sides of the aisle at every level are paying attention to what Ohio businesses are saying. So we can't we, we're always going to be ready to follow your lead on these issues. Uh, it's a great partnership. Thanks for being here. I'm sure I'm going to be talking to you just about every day and uh, <laughs> we're going to get this done. Right. Look forward to it. Thank you, John. Thank you, Sean.